All right then ninjas, so we have everything set up now with our store and thunk so that we can now access our Firestore database inside this function right here. And we can interact with that database and maybe add some data and that's what we're gonna do in this tutorial. So if we take a look at create project, this is the component with the form on to add a new project. And when we click submit, what it does is prevents the default action, then it calls create project which is added to our props via this thing down here, right? And that calls a dispatch and it calls create project and passes in that project right here. And the project is coming from the state. So it's calling this action creator and that is returning a new function. It takes in the project, returns this function and it halts that dispatch. So now what we can do is take that project and we can use get Firestore to add that project to our database before we then dispatch an action. Make sense? Okay, so the way we do that, the way we add some data to Firestore is by first of all, initializing this function and then storing the results in a constant. That gives us a reference to our Firestore database. So let's do that. We'll say const Firestore. You can call this whatever you want. I'm calling it Firestore and we'll set it equal to get Firestore and we'll invoke that function. So that gives us a reference now to our Firestore database. So now what we could do is we could access our projects collection inside that database. Remember, if we have a look inside here, we have a projects collection. So we can say firestore.collection and then in parentheses, the name of that collection, which is projects. And that is now getting us a reference to our projects collection. Now, what we want to do is add a new document to this collection. So let's say add like so, that's all we need to do. And we pass in an object into this add method. And this object, this represents the document that we'll be adding to that collection. Okay, all right then. So inside here, we want different properties inside this project. First of all, we want the title and we want the content. Now remember, when we first dispatched this action, we passed in this dot state over here, which had the title and the content. So this dot state is taken in to this action creator. So we have the title and the content on this project. So we could just use the spread operator dot 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 and then the project which we receive to spread those two properties. So it's the same as putting the project dot title and the project dot content. OK, so we have those two properties now, but we also need some other properties. We need the author first name, the author last name, the author ID, and when it was created, some kind of timestamp. So let's add those in. Now, ultimately, when we're working with authentication, we'll grab this data, this first name and last name and author ID from the currently logged in user. But since we've not done authentication yet, I'm just gonna hard code these values for now. So let's say author first name and set that equal to net. And I think you know what's coming, author last name, and that is gonna be Ninja, surprise, surprise, all right. And then we want an author ID. Again, I'll make this up for now, one, two, three, four, five. And then finally, we want some kind of property to say when this was created at, some kind of timestamp. We'll call this created at, and then we'll set it equal to a new date like so. Okay, so that will do for now. Okay, so this thing here, this is gonna go out to our Firestore, to the projects collection and add this new document right here. And it's also gonna generate a new document ID for us, much like this thing. We don't have to worry about that. It's gonna automatically do that. But this whole process of adding a document to our Firestore collection, this is asynchronous. It takes some time to do. So we don't want to dispatch this until it's done. Now, because this takes some time to do, it returns a promise. And that means that, look, at some point, this is going to complete. And what you can do is tack on a then method at the end of this. And this then method will only fire when this action is complete, when we've added this document to the collection. So this then method takes in a callback function. And this callback function is the thing that fires when this task is complete. So let's pass in that callback function, an arrow function. And inside here, then we want to dispatch this action. So let's cut it from there and paste it in there. Now then, it could be 
that this can't complete for whatever reason and we get an error and we can catch that error right here. And the same thing happens. If there's an error and it's returned to us, then this catch method right here takes a callback function, which will fire when we receive that error. And we can take in that error right here. Okay, so we could dispatch a different action here if we get an error, because we don't want to dispatch a create project action because we've not created a project. There's been some kind of error. So I could dispatch now a different kind of action and the type could be create project error and then we could pass in as the second parameter the error that we receive right here okay so that's pretty much it that's all there is to it we're now connecting to firestore to the projects collection adding a new document based on the project that we receive then we're dispatching a created project action or the create project error action to the reducer so let's save this and let's handle these two things inside the reducer now so if we go over to not the root reducer we don't want that we want the project reducer we want to handle those two actions inside here so we've already handled this one here we say okay in the case of create project I want you to log this to the console and then after we log that let's just return the state as it is we don't want to alter the state yet We'll just leave it as is for now. Okay, so the other case was create project error. So if this is the case, then what we'll do is console.log and we want to log the error. So we'll just say create project error and we'll log the action dot error that we receive. Okay. And then we just want to return the state again. We won't change the state for now. So when we have a switch case, we want also normally a default case. So if none of these match, if we don't get a create project action or a create project error action, and we get something else that we don't handle here, then we'll just have a default case that runs. And that is just gonna return the state as well and because we do that now we can take out this at the bottom because it will never be reached this default case will catch everything else so let's get rid of that okay then so we can save this now and what we could do is go over to our project and we can try this out we could go to new project and add in I don't know Yoshi's egg hunt and then help collect all the eggs and then we're going to create this. Now, nothing happens here, but if we go to our database, we can see now another document has been added up here. So we can see the content is help collect all the eggs. Awesome. This is all working. Yet yeah, these are hard coded right now, but they will become dynamic later on. But we are successfully now hooking up our application with Firestore so we can add those documents to our collection. So just quickly one more time just to go through this Feel free to skip to the next video if you want to But what we're doing inside the create project component is we're filling in the form Then we're clicking submit in this handle submit method We're saying this dot props dot create project and that is calling this thing down here because we used map dispatch to props to create this on the props object we're passing in the project which is stored on the state and we're using this dispatch and we're calling this action creator which is imported at the top okay create project so we're passing in the project right here which is just this dot state into this project action and inside this project action we return a function we use thunk to do that we get access to the dispatch get state and these two things right here now inside here, what we're doing is essentially pausing the dispatch while we do this asynchronous stuff. So we're getting the fire store, then we're adding a new document to the projects collection based on the project that we receive from the state of the create project component. We're hard coding this stuff for now and we're adding a date. Then because this is asynchronous and it takes some time to do, we attach a then method and this fires a dispatch when it's complete to say we've created a project and this is the project and we're catching any errors and dispatching a different action, a create project error action with that error if we get one. Then we can handle those right here inside this switch case. All we're doing now is logging these to the console. We could edit the state if we wanted to, but we're not doing yet. 
we're just returning the state. But more importantly, we've added a document to the collection. So all this is working now. But even though we've added this to the collection, if we go to the home page, we're still seeing this dummy data. Remember, this dummy data is all defined here. So we want to find out a way, instead of showing this dummy data, to show this data inside the collection over here, the projects collection. And we'll look at how we can do that in the very next video.